Hi, I'm Griff Patch. Welcome to part four of um, my scrolling platform tutorial for Scratch. Um, where we left off this tutorial, we had a nice scrolling engine, um, but what was missing was that uh, we have this problem that, that in Scratch, as the costumes move off the side of the screen, uh, they don't go off. So you can still see the left-hand side, the level from the, to the left, and on the right-hand side, bits of the level from the right. So what we need to do is solve that so that these bits of level move off the screen and uh, are not visible. So let's get straight into it and work on that. So what we're going to do is move into the platform as Sprite. And we have to change this little script a little bit. So the way I like to do this on uh, for a very simple way of doing it is, is try and get around this problem of it uh, moving past the edge and stopping. Now, how can we detect that that's happened? Um, the best way that I've found is as follows. So what we can do is create a new custom block in the platform as Sprite and call it position and add to that by opening up options an X and a Y number. And uh, we'll run it without screen refresh like this and move your go to into the position and move the position block into the tick and you can change this around so you can pass in the x minus scroll x and the y minus scroll y into your position so we're kind of replacing this go to x y with this position a custom block now within here you now want to position it at the position that you've passed in so this is doing pretty much exactly as what it was doing already. So at the moment that should just work just the same. So the platform sprites are being positioned just as they were before. But now what we can do is a bit of cleverness in here. Because what happens when you try and move something off the screen, you tell it to go to a certain position and it's not going to the position you wanted it to go to. That's why it's stuck to the edge. So we can test to see whether it's actually gone to where you wanted it to with a little comparison in here. So if we do an if then else underneath the go to you want to have an and in this if and then an equals in both sides and put x on one side and y on the other but then look into the um, uh, motions block you'll notice that there's an X position and a Y position in here. Now this is the position that's actually got the position of the sprite right now. So if the position that we wanted to position at is the position that it's actually at in the X and in the Y, then it's gone to where we wanted it to go to. So we said go to this X position, it's done a go to X position, and then you check to see whether it actually is at that X position, and the same with the Y. So if it is where it's meant to be, then we show the sprite, the platform. And if it isn't where you wanted it and it's else, you hide it. So it's only showing it if it's actually gone where you told it to go. If it hasn't gone where you told it to go, it hides it. So let's have a go at that now if we run this. If we walk across, see whether these are disappearing. And there you go, they are. So on the left hand side here, as soon as that goes off, it disappears. It's exactly what we wanted. So that is the easiest way I could find to make things scroll off the screen. Um, in Scratch 2, which is what we're using here, there is a bit of a, a little bit of a, a, um, a performance decrease when you do this. When you when you call show every single time you you position it, it could actually cause it to slow down a little bit when you're doing some sensing touching. Not a lot in this particular case, but enough that it would would uh, be a problem. But that is actually going to be fixed in Scratch 3. And since Scratch 3 is just around the corner, I'm not going to bother to go any further, further detail of how you can make that even better. It works just fine in Scratch 3, which is really good. I'm looking forward to that. So what's the next thing we're going to change in this platformer? I think the next thing we need is um, player death. At the moment, if I fall off here, no, I'm still there at the bottom and I'm alive. So we need some way of getting the player to die and come start the level off afresh. And for that, I think we really need to make the level a little bit more serious um, because at the moment it's all white and happy. Let's change the game around a little bit. Let's change the background to black. I'll fill in the background black and let's change our level a little bit too. Let's make this 
a white platform so we can still see it. Let's just run that so we can see it. Yep, there we go. Um, we don't need this level anymore. Let's get rid of that. Um, let's just create some slightly different levels. So level part two, I'll have a filled in. Let's go yellow. I'll make a very simple thing to jump over there. Okay, and let's have another level duplicate that. Let's have um, green. And what we probably want is some lava because we love lava in these computer games. Let's just draw, let's draw a rectangle in here, a bit like the previous level. And now let's reshape it. Click to add a new point. And we'll create a little basin, which we'll fill with lava like this. And now if we make another rectangle and a red one for lava, we'll fill this up with lava. And now we'll send that to the back so it's behind the other object. There we go, a little lava pit. So that's three little levels. Let's just play that and see if it looks okay. There we go. And a lava. But at the moment, of course, we can just jump on that lava. Aha! That won't be happening for long. So first off, let's do the um, let's code up some scripts to let you play a die. So that will need the player sprite. Um, first thing we need is a new variable, and we're going to call that exit, um, all capitals, and it's going to be for all sprites. Okay. Stop that being visible. And we need to initialize this exit, and we'll do that um, in the game on sprite, uh, sorry, game on script. Let me just move this down a bit so we've got some space. So set exit, and we'll set it to empty string. So go in there, get rid of that zero, and just have it empty like that. So exit is not anything at the moment. Now, the idea of this is that when exit gets set, that means that something's happened that's going to cause us to exit from the uh, current game. And that's where this repeat in the play game um, script comes in. So at the moment, we're repeating until, and it just keeps on going forever because nothing's in there. But now we're going to change that. We're going to need an operator and have greater than. Pop that into that repeat loop and use the new exit variable and just put it like that. So and repeat until exit is greater than nothing. Uh, and that means that whenever we set the variable exit to anything at all, this repeat loop is going to finish and the game is going to end. At least it's going to drop out of this bit. And actually then it's going to loop around and start the level again, which is what the idea is. So when you die, or whatever it is, I'm going to drop out of the game and then reset the level. Right, now we need the, um, the death animation. So let's add in a new custom block. Um, and we're going to call this game hyphen die. And this is not going to be run without refresh. It's going to be just like that. We want it to be able to refresh the screen, this little animation. So let's get that. Um, we need to put that somewhere clean. So I'm going to just move it right over to the right hand side like this. OK. So what we're going to do in this little animation here is first of all, we're going to set exit back to empty string like that. So no matter what happened um, when we die, after we've died, this exit string is going to be back to blank so the game can continue without exiting that little loop. And now we're going to deal with the little death animation. So let's have a repeat block in here and we'll get the little character to flash when he dies. So repeat three, no, five, five times. And we're going to hide, so get into the hide block, like that. And now we need a wait so that he hides, and then he waits before he appears again. And we'll just do a really short time, so 0 0.1 second, so a tenth of a second. And then we'll show, and then we'll hide again for another tenth of a second. Don't do that. And that's going to loop five times. Let's just run that. If you click on this, you can see it running. So if I click on that block, there we go, flashes on and off five times. That's a good speed. Yep, I like that. Okay, so now what do we need to do at the end of that? So at the moment he ends on the show, but we actually want him hidden at the end. So let's hide again at the very end after the repeat block. And we'll have another wait for half a second. 
just while he's not visible before we then can do anything else. So that's our death script. So now we need to be able to trigger that death script. So there's a few places we'd want to trigger a death. One is falling off the edge of the level. Other one is touching lava or some other type of thing. So we'll do the falling off the level first. So uh, for that one, we are going to add uh, an extra bit of script to uh, the tick, the ticks, the tick custom block. I'll just move that out of the way. So we've got some space. So here is where we're changing uh, player Y. In our current play game script, we've got a loop and we've got tick. And at the end of it, we've got the set scroll Y, uh, scroll X for the scrolling and the positioning of our person before we broadcast. Let's move that little bit out of here, put the tick back in, the broadcast tick, and move the scroll X down to the bottom of the tick custom block. So in tick now, we're doing everything as well as doing the, um, the tick of the player. We're also setting the scroll and the positioning at the bottom. So that's all within tick. That makes this a bit cleaner. And then at the bottom, after we've done the position, then we can do our check to see if he's fallen off the bottom of the screen or not. So put a, put a, a if condition under the position. And the thing we need to check is the uh, position of the player, Y. So if position, where is the Y? There, if the Y position of the player is less than a certain value, then we'll kill off the player. And we'll choose minus 180, because that is at the moment, the bottom of this level here, minus 180 is the very smallest value you can have before he's halfway off the screen. So if he's halfway off the screen, then we want to set his to him to be dead. So we set, and then we change this to be exit. And we're going to set exit to be the word die. So that should, as soon as it uh, sets that to die, this little loop here will stop working because exit will be greater than nothing. And then we'll go down here. And what we want to do down here is trigger the, uh, the death animation. So get your game die and pop it there. Right, so can we try that? No, nope. before we don't, no, we don't, before we try it, there's one more thing we need to do. Something we haven't done yet is reset the level. So we've got this loop here. Once you die, you come back round. It calls reset with a broadcast, and then it calls setup with a broadcast. The setup, if you look at the platforming sprite in here, is what clones the level, it creates it. So if we go and do that again after we've died, it's going to create another level on top of the previous level, and that's not going to be good. It's going to keep building up more and more clones. What we haven't got is the reset part. So let's add in a new a new receiver in here. When I receive, there it is. So when I receive reset, which is broadcast before setup, in this, all I want to do is delete clone. Delete this clone like that. So all of the bits of level that have been created so far will all be deleted at that point when reset is called, apart from the original one that wasn't a clone. And so that will still exist, but that's fine because then setup will then create the new clones. Right, let's give it a go. I think that's ready to go. So broadcast. So here's our new level. Looking good. Let's fall off the bottom. And there we are, flashes and resets. Flashes, resets. Flashes resets. Great. There we go. We can die now. Excellent. So the next thing to add in is detecting this stuff, lava. So stop our project. Right. For the lava, we want to add um, a new custom block again, which will be testing whether we're dying. So let's create a new custom block called test hyphen die. And I'll do it without run without screen refresh. Here we go. Test die. And this is just going to test whether we're touching red at the moment. So I'll put an if in here. And then touching color. Oh, no, wrong block. Touching color, sorry. And we will choose red. Okay, if we're touching red, and we can reuse the existing uh, way of dying. So set exit to die. 
Okay, so if we're touching red, we're going to die. But where do we call this test from? We probably want to call it whenever we move the position of the player. So here we are. If we change the player X, change the X, reposition, and we should probably do it just in there. So after we call position, we'll also call test die. We won't do it in these positions here because that's just getting us back to where we were if we've touched something we shouldn't, like a platform. Um, we only want to do it as little as possible because touching color is a little bit expensive to call. So let's just do it there where we first move to see if we can move or not. And then again, we also want to call it in the change player Y script after that position. So test die in there. Okay, let's see if that works. So let's go and find that lava. There we go. Touches the lava and is no more. Right, that's it. That's all I wanted to show for this tutorial. Uh, and we'll add in perhaps some collectibles and things or uh, maybe the uh, new level uh, feature next uh, tutorial. All right, thank you for watching. Bye now.